I'll be right with you. Putting for duty, sir. Mr. McGunn's back. Yes, I know, but I haven't seen him yet. He's on his way now, we old Bill. Ah. Mr. McCunn and old Bill coming now to go. You're a wonderful chap, McCunn. Aye, maybe so. But let's press on. I've got an awful lot to tell you. But the most important thing is that I found out from Loudon that the balloon is going to go up within the next 24 hours. Over there. Bet you didn't expect to see me again, miss. You are wrong. I knew you would come back. You did? You are not one of those who desert his friends. Hmm. They got a bit bashed climbing up the cliff. <laughs> you are kind. You are kind and brave. You are going to hold the house? The garrison. 
You are welcome. These knapsacks are filled with fiddles. Bread, cheese, boiled ham, that sort of thing. Would you like to be in charge of the rations? Would that not be a better job for my cousin Eugenie? Oh, no. <laughs> oh. I'm glad you're only joking, miss. No, no, no disrespect to the lady. Hmm. What's it, Thomas Shoney? I'd like to get him in bulleted, sir. If you'll excuse us, mademoiselle. Come on, my cousin. Your jewels are safe in the bank. It is not the jewels that I'm worrying about. I'm worrying about that evil man who is coming here. Over our dead bodies. Dead bodies have never stopped him yet. It's not a lot of room, I'm afraid. It's only eight. What do you mean, only eight? Where we live in Glasgow, eight to rooms, nothing. <laughs> Get out there. When do you think the balloon's going up? Well, you said tomorrow. I did, no. The way I see it is this. This crowd that's coming will want as much time as they can get to put distance between themselves and Hunting Tower after they've kidnapped the lassie. And Loudon will want to give them as much time as he could. In other words, two days in the three. I think you're right, Mr. McCunn. Yes, I agree. Thomas Shoney and me, the councillor, what about the situation? Yeah, oh, I and uh, what did you decide? Tell Thomas, off balance. Well, that's fine as far as it goes, but it uh, doesn't go very far. Well, it hasn't reached me anyway. What Thomas means is this. The folk that's coming are expecting to walk into a certain situation. We fix it that they find a different you. Mm. Aye. Oh, <laughs> How do you propose to do that? We sort out Dobson, Leon and Spill. Two to go. We better lock him in the wine cellar. Do you want them, Mr. McCoy? Put them in the pantry just off the kitchen. Two out of three. Not bad. Maybe, but I'll not rest content until Dobson's tied up with the rest of them. Jolly old Roman sentry. Faithful unto death. How long have you been there? Not very long. Come in. It's cold in the corridor. My cousin Eugene is asleep. Dreaming of food, I doubt. She is greedy, no? No. She just likes a lot. <laughs> Dobson has not come. Well, when he does, we'll be ready for him. 
You know that boy Dougal is wonderful. Thinks of everything. Even got us to take the bulb out of the light in the hall. That little boy. There's something about him. Well, the easy word for it is leadership. <laughs> Why are you doing this? For purely selfish reasons. May I hear them? I'm doing it because of a girl I met in Rome. I'm doing it because of a song she used to sing. And what do you ask of this girl in return? Nothing. Take my advice. Go to bed. Yes. Good night. For the wise old doll. Only a daft crater would be up in a night like this. Oh, Mr. McCon. Smart wee laddie. You only tell Dougal, will you? Tell him what? I fell asleep in sentry duty. He didn't be sure to dawn every day for a fortnight. He's raving about Napoleon. Mr. McCon, that's no is it there? That's the other god will die half thing when the Dobson's coming. Danish brig making young we harbour in this ladder. She can lie off and land them in the boots. The public, the majest. Who cannot be cured must be endured. What's wrong with the lights? Uh, there'll be a fuse gone. This place is needing rewired. I'll away and sort it. Is that you, Speedle? Yes, Mr. Loudon. Where's Leon? Oh, yes. Stay where you are, Loudon. You winged him, Mr. Duncan. You winged him. The sort of work put Dobson on the cave eve. We're going to flush him out. No, stay here, laddie. Don't get separated. McCunn, and I'll break his neck if anyone tries to stop me leaving. Let the boy go, Dobson. That's far enough. Come on, Dobson. You must know the game is up by now. Give you till I count three to get out of the way. One, Dobson. Two, three. She crowned them with a flower pot. She went and crowned them with a flower pot. <laughs> <laughs> Will it be all right, think you? Yes, there is no fracture. A bad blow, but I do not think anything more serious. 
You had a dab hand for the bandaging. I was a nurse for some time in Russia at the end of the war. On no account must anyone give him brandy. Very goodness. Now you, son. You nearly choked me. But I'm all right. Where did you put him? In the boiler house. Should I put him in the boiler and let it? Remember the Geneva Convention? Right. To business. Now, we need a new plan. Why? Because this lot that are coming, whoever they are, are coming from the sea. How'd you care that? Well, Napoleon and I heard Loughton telling Dobson about a Danish boat that's coming tomorrow. Is it true you shot a factor? Only shot him a wee bit. Imagine shooting a factor. That's enough to get you the freedom of Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the jail. They're coming through the wire, it's a whole new situation. Well, exactly. If they've got a fast boat, they could be out of the firth and away beyond the law before we could get a policeman to button up his tunic. Here's what we'll do. We'll get the diehards out of the house so we can keep mobile. Fine. You, me and Mr. Heritage will stay here as a garrison. Good. And as soon as it's daylight, we'll get the women out of the house into a place of safety. You two ladies, Auntie Phoebe. Mr. McCon left his pistol. Yes, sir, I see. You did the right thing, Dougal. Getting rid of the women, you mean? Yes. Plain as a nose in your face. When the whistle blows, we don't want the place being cluttered up with civilians, do we? Oh, <laughs> it's just some things that our Elspeth I keep when, when she comes here. <laughs> the bit the young lady where they touch her as the saying goes. Andy, Phoebe, <laughs> listen to me. We need help. We need it desperately. We've taken on our bigger job for two men and half a dozen ladies. We need your help, and we need it this very morning. Is it men you need? And guns. Well, they're, they're a big white house away up near the hills and beyond the station. You mean on the east side of the air road? The very place. They call it the Mains of Garpo. Now, the man that lives there, he's English, but his mother's name was D.L. And he was a great friend of Mr. Quinton's. A friend of Quinton's? Uh, all the one like David and Jonathan, the pair of them. What's his man's name? Sir Archibald Roylance. Well, he used to be awful wild. But they tell me he's a lot quieter now since he went to the war and, and he fell out an aeroplane. Uh, will he be at the Baines now, do you think? Uh, the post told me he came last week. I think we'll take a bit of her up there and see him. Uh, well, first of all, now, nephew, you'll have a wash and a shave. I'm not having you gone up to the Mains and affronting the family. That's any good, Dougal. He's shot already. Can I ask my walk? Who is for the deer? He will on top. Maybe she left that old woman today. The first floor puts it by. There comes no fool. He knows when to be absent. Wait, Jakey. What are you going to do with that? Wear it for a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> What do you do to earn money? Oh, nothing. I'm retired. But before that? I was in the provision trade. A grocer. Are all the grocers in Glasgow like you? <laughs> yeah, most of them. Formidable. 
Are you married? I have been these past 30 years. You have children? Uh, no. We had a daughter. She would have been about your age had she lived. Wonder how heritage is getting along. You feel not good about leaving him? A wee bit. He's a poet. Not practical at all. I think he's in love with me. Are you kind of pleased with that? Yes, I'm very happy. Does that mean... No, it does not. If I told him that I loved him, which I do not, he would run ten miles. I believe you're right. I think he's the kind that likes to worship from afar. For a woman, that is sometimes a comforting distance. <laughs> There's the house. A Mr. Dixon McCann to see you, sir. McCann? What does he want? He says he needs your help, and possibly mine too, sir. It's intriguing. Show the chap in. Mr. Dixon McCann, sir. Sir Archibald. McCann. Oh, I say, now you wouldn't be the, uh, the ham chap, would you? I was. Oh, I'm glad to meet you. You're a household name in these parts. Proud to you say so, Sir Archibald. <laughs> you uh, come here on business, have you? Uh, well, well, certainly not the provision business. <laughs> what can we do for you? I have a very strange story to tell you. Well, heaven knows, I have all the time in the world to listen to strange stories. Trouble is, you may not believe it. Supposing I don't? I've taken the precaution of fetching along a witness. Witness? A princess. A princess? Oh, well, now come along, my dear chap. I, well, I mean to say, a princess. Princess, could you come in, please? I believe that you are a soldier. Uh, two years infantry, then the flying corps. Day before armistice, luck gave out, took rather a nasty toss. You were a friend of Captain Kennedy. Oh, we were at the same private school together. Well, we were inseparable till he went abroad to cram for the diplomatic. Good. Then I will tell you what I told Captain Kennedy. You, Thomas Shoney, take me, Jake, and make contact with Mr. McConney's way back here. The rest of you, out in the grounds. Come in. What can I do for you, sir? I called at the inn, but no one seems to be there. I'm not surprised. Dobson, the innkeeper, seems to be more doing it at quarter these days than he is at the end. Dobson, that is the name of the man I'm looking for. Oh, well, he's anything but a good man, I'll tell you that, for nothing. And I was looking for dark water when I should have been looking for dull quarter. Is Dobson a friend of yours? Not exactly. Because if he is, you can get out of this kitchen as quick as you like. When I think of Dobson and that poor devil. What girl are you talking about? <laughs> take your hand it's off her me. name, Saskia. You're hurting me, let go. I beg your pardon. And well, you may. See, go away. Get out of this kitchen. I think you've told me all I need to know. I've told you nothing. Go away. I may be back. You know, McCann, you're the most wholehearted brigand I've ever come across. 
You're waging a private war and breaking every law of the land. I mean to see this job through. I'm sorry that we're such a bunch of crocs here. We've all been soldiers. You can shoot. Yes, but... Well, Syme, my butler, as you probably noticed, has lost an arm. Uh, McGuffin, the gamekeeper, still has a Turkish bullet in his thigh. And Carfrey, the chauffeur, was in the yeomanry. He has a silver plate in his skull. And then there's myself, as lame as a duck. You've got plenty guns. Oh, yes, yes, we've no end of guns. Now, I advise shotguns. They've got more stopping power in a rush than a rifle. <laughs> Every man to his trade. <laughs> right. Now, you'll see if you can gee up the chief constable. Then load the car with your folk and get down the road as fast as you can to hunting tower. There'll be two boys waiting for you. Take your orders from them. And if one of them is called Dougal, pay heed to what he says. He has a grand head for battles. Anything else? Just one thing. I'll have to check that the diehards haven't left me a message at Mrs. Moon's. You'll be needing your car for your men and yourself. You want me to lay on transport for you? Is that it? Right. Hmm. Yes, well, I think I've got just the thing. Syme! Break your neck and legs. Who say do you on? That's what the German pilots used to say, uh, as a way of wishing each other good luck. Perhaps <laughs> as may be, but in the present circumstances, it's a bit near the bone. I've only been on a bike for 20 years. in battles. Did this country not once have a queen called Baudicere? <laughs> well, yes. That's what I mean to say. Well, nowadays, it, it just isn't done. Am I to stand idly by while two gallant men and some brave small boys fight my battles for me? <sighs> there might not be a battle. There will be a battle. And if it goes badly for you, then I alone might be able to save you, but only if I am there. 